Policy shifts over the past few years in South Africa and other countries are making critical HIV prevention and treatment interventions increasingly available. HIV counseling and testing is the first step in accessing this treatment. However, many countries are struggling to meet HIV prevention and treatment targets due to the low uptake of facility-based HIV testing. Many barriers may prevent people from accessing HIV testing at health facilities, including stigma, fear of lack of confidentiality, cost, and transport difficulties. As a result of these barriers, there has been a growing interest in expanding testing coverage through community-based models, such as home-based testing. Our study sought to determine the effectiveness of door-to-door -door offer of HIV testing at home. The study was undertaken in a very rural area of KwaZulu-Natal province in South Africa, Umzumkulu subdistrict. This subdistrict is in one of the poorest areas in South Africa. A large proportion of households are headed by women and the area has an antenatal HIV prevalence of 37%, placing it amongst the highest in the country. We performed a baseline survey in the area in 2008 to measure the baseline rates of HIV testing. We then randomized 16 communities, eight to receive home-based HIV testing and eight to receive the standard care, which was HIV testing available in local clinics. Within the eight intervention communities, local women were selected to be trained as lay counsellors. The counsellors had all completed 12 years of schooling, were resident in the intervention communities, and had a history of community work. The counsellors had 10 days of training in the nationally accredited voluntary counselling and testing training course, and then spent four months gaining practical experience under the supervision of nurses in local clinics. At the start of the intervention, extensive community mobilization took place. This involved the counselors having discussions with local chiefs and traditional leaders about HIV and HIV counseling and testing. Through these discussions, community leaders were encouraged to be the first in their communities to test. From September 2009 to November 2010, the lay counselors proceeded door to door visiting all households in the intervention clusters. After seeking permission from the household head, they offered free, pre-test counselling, HIV testing and post-test counselling to all household members. The counsellors used sensor and SD BioLine rapid HIV test kits for the HIV testing. Those who tested HIV positive were given a referral letter to be taken to a local healthcare facility of their choice in order to obtain CD4 testing and other HIV related services. To measure primary and secondary outcomes, we undertook a household survey approximately 18 months after the start of the intervention. We found that significantly more people accepted testing in our intervention areas compared to our control areas. We also found that more couples accepted to have HIV testing together in our intervention areas. The majority of individuals who tested during the study period in the control arm had tested in a health facility, whilst in the intervention arm, the majority had tested at home. Some individuals in the intervention arm still chose to test in a health facility, which suggests that multiple avenues for testing are needed. This study has shown that home-based HIV counselling and testing can increase the prevalence of HIV testing in a rural area with high levels of stigma, which could be representative of many rural African communities. The intervention also achieved higher levels of couple counselling and testing, a strategy which is being encouraged by the World Health Organization. The study has also shown that well-trained lay counsellors can conduct counselling and HIV testing within homes and that this is acceptable to rural households. As many countries consider the roles of lay health workers, this evidence could be used to inform policies as we strive towards universal HIV testing.